Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, the Bear Wozniak Adventure is the best show in the whole universe because we have the best guests in the whole universe. Unfortunately, we had trouble getting a good guest this week. We always like to try to find a real manly guy, a real gritty guy, and all we could find was a guy that runs an oil field and a ranch in in West Texas. Our guest today is going to be Adrian Gonzalez. He's, a, he's a, a father of eight kids. He's a catechist. He's an RCIA teacher. He's, he's on the front lines of the new evangelization. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We have our, as our guest someone who, who runs an oil field and has a ranch. And, uh, and I'm used to being the guy who, who I used to do uh, some herding of animals in my life. People, a lot of people don't know that about me. But I've, I, what I do is a little bit more challenging than someone who herds cattle. I herded uh, rabbits which is kind of the definition of my job description when I ran the world tour for the International Tatum Surfing Association and uh, trying, to get, trying to get surfers together to surf in a contest is just because all surfers are very independent thinking. That's why they surf. But tandem surfing is when you have a man and a woman on a board together. So now I got to get two people ready to get out and surf. And so I know a little bit about herding, herding, uh, herding rabbits. But we have as our guest today, Adrian Gonzalez, who runs an oil field and uh, has a ranch and a cat uh, and and has cattle on his ranch, and so uh, he probably knows a little bit more about the nitty gritty of that. So aloha, Adrian. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Hi. So how, how many? Doing, how many? I see. I'm looking at your your uh, at, at you on video, and I see at least I think three cowboy hats. How many do you wear at one time? I'm just curious. I only wear one for this little noggin here. They go noggin, but. Uh, what you're looking at there is all my dad's hats uh, oh, uh, sitting up in his office. And so it's cool. very uh, special to me because he just passed away with the pandemic. I was my best friend for 30 years. Oh. And he kind of made me the man I am. And now I've got to take over the reins here, so to speak. But I think it's... it's the ranch it, and the company. Yeah, I think it's it's appropriate to see that. Is that a picture of your dad in the background? It is. I took uh. that picture a while back, and uh, he built his house back there. Oh. And... What? Um, we're out here on West Texas. What type of uh, horse is he riding? Uh, he's more of a quarter horse breed. Which is, mm. He's uh, uh, playing Janes for uh, rounding up cattle and doing chores. And but you know, you look at that. You ranch. look at you look at the hat rack there with the. I think it's three or four cowboy yeah. hats. He he wore a lot of different hats in his yeah. life. And uh, yeah. you can bring us back, bring us up, and you do too. I see. You know, you're you're involved in so many things. Well, first of all, you're a father with eight kids, so you know how to herd rabbits, also. And you serve on your pastoral yeah. count. <laughs> you serve on your pastoral council, which I really challenge men to do because so many men will say, "Well, they're just the women have taken over the church." Well, you know, it's not because it's their fault. It's because yeah. men don't man up and serve. That's and right. You, and you're That's the right. and you're the choir director for English and Spanish. And you lead, you lead a holy hour. You have RCIA teacher, and so many other things that that you're in that you're involved with the ministry, the Curcio movement, um, prison mm -hmm. ministry, orphanage, nursing home, and, and Knights of Columbus member. So you seem to wear a lot of cowboy hats too, different hats as well. Yes, that's right. Family, uh, personal has a lot of hats, but uh, work I have a lot of hats at church. Uh, you just name it. I have to. Uh, you didn't mention there, but I'm also the web designer, and I do a lot of web stuff for the church and for the ministries that a lot of them, which you probably mention and I'll mention later. But yeah, there's a lot of hats. Well, you you uh, you were raised on a ranch, but uh, is your house near the oil field also, or is that? We're in the oil field, uh, so if you look out my windows, I can see wells in the front of my house, behind my house. They're all over. If you look. When you fly out here, uh, you'll see like uh, just checkerboards of just thousands of thousands of oil wells. I'm thinking we're the largest producer for America in this area. Uh, it's for the it's called Permian Basin. Yeah. So a lot of what right. 
what you what we need is coming out from here. It's a pretty important spot for our country. Well, you said you you were so you were raised on that same you were raised there too, right there where you where you yeah. live now. Yeah, I basically have been raised here. I was born in Colorado and then raised for a little bit in Mexico, but this has been my whole life out here in West Texas, basically. Well, what was it like? Uh, you, you, saw, you were there with your dad through the day, and you, you must have learned to work alongside him. What was that like? Yeah. What was your father's name, or what was your father's name? His name is Martin. Martin. Um, what, was, what, what life lessons? How was that? Was that hard? Was it, what was that like? It's a blessing. Um, I know many... I'm getting choked up. Uh, and I don't know, uh, a lot of guys that get to have a close relationship with their dad, but uh, I did. Uh, everything I know is because of him. Sorry. But uh, I guess sentimental because I think about God. Uh, I'm the only son, so I get to uh, relate a lot of the gospel message to myself, like where people are trying to bypass me at work at our family business and he's the main man, but I'm like Jesus. And and uh, if people on you that I really have the hookup, I, everything really gets funneled to me through me in the end. So all these guys that didn't want me, now they have to deal with me and, uh, and uh, take it or leave it. I'm here and uh, all the, basically you can relate it just like our Lord. So we learned a lot together. Uh, I saw his mistakes in faith, in faith, family, and work. But I've seen a lot more of his triumphs. Uh, he was citizen of the year for Andrews. He won a lot of recognition, and uh, he was beloved by just about everybody he met. Became his his friend immediately, and that's why they would remember him. And everybody flocked to the uh, funeral, just saying, "Hey, I met him once, and that's why I'm here." So you don't get to hear that kind of story very often. And uh, it's been really, he's been an inspiration to me the whole time. And still today, I tell people that I feel like I love him more now that he's gone. And how can that be? Well, it's like oh, my, my nephew, his first <laughs> uh, grandchild is now pregnant. Uh, he's got his girlfriend pregnant, unfortunately. But uh, where I'm going with that is that uh, I lost my train of thought, but he's he's been everything for us. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, I get to learn all the all the nuts and bolts of life through your through your father basically and and so I hope this video inspires fathers to be men men of God because as it stands scientifically stu studies church pews research the men are in the downfall uh, even the XY chromosome studies are saying that you know uh, in a million years that man gene is not going to be there the way things are going so to have learned my dad that was everything from a brawler in his younger days and he was killed in an accident came back to life and he speaks of his out of body death experience. Uh, I learned a lot from somebody like that. It just, it just goes eons and eons. It goes deep, deep, deep into a super intimate relationship. Uh, your best friend, you know, so well, you know, that he, helps uh, explain a little bit. Well, you know, your, your father also when you're a younger man too, especially a younger boy, he seems invincible all powerful but you had an experience i think once is how w when your your father was a horse rolled up on him <laughs> what 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 happened what happened well, you realize oh, you're yeah we were <laughs> it's funny you brought that up yeah when we were uh living back at the other side of town and we had some horses and uh, my dad was trying to break this kind of wild horse and he was doing all right but this he got spooked, and when he got on him, he got spooked, and he reared up. And my dad's hanging in there, but the horse just toppled over, maybe with his weight, and it just mm. fell on my dad, and the horse's legs were just dangling. My dad was on the bottom, and I was freaking out. I kind of screamed, and I didn't know what to do, so I pushed the horse off my dad, and he got up, and it's that invincible guy. He's okay. Really? Back on the horse. Oh, yeah. And, yeah I, I just kept I, going. Hey, I guarantee you later that <laughs> night, he's like, oh, oh man. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 didn't, he didn't want you to know. He didn't want you to know, right? He just shook it all. Oh, no. Right. <laughs> well, that's nothing. Yeah, I never saw it. Yeah. I never saw it. <laughs> <laughs> but you, what did you feel? You got up there and you pushed on that horse. You did. You. you, uh, you, you I just, I, that's the only thing I can think of to help him because I saw the horse was like in a perfect balance mode. He didn't know what to do with all its kicks. So I said, yeah. okay, I'll just teeter him over and it'll just fall and over. And rolled him off. 
Yeah, I just cut him right off. I was talking to Father Bryce Lundgren today. He's out here visiting us in, in Hawaii. We're, we're down having coffee this morning. We're about to go surfing. We're talking about bronc riding. Oh. And he said he learned so much from his dad. And he said, I, I, I just learned how to, I, I just got on a horse and started riding. But he said, now I'm trying to learn. And he is, he's, he, they have a big working ranch in Wyoming. But he said, now I'm trying to really learn horsemanship. But he said, remember, the first thing my dad told me was stay in the middle. <laughs> You know, stay in the saddle. And that's kind of what we do as fathers is we try to teach our children, show our children to stay centered, stay, you know, stay right there in the middle of, of God's will. And when, when life starts bucking, you just stay, you just hang on to God and uh, and uh, hang on to the things that you're uh, how many times when like I just wrote my, la my my new book was I quoting my dad in my book or my mom, too, for that matter. It was like it just comes out and I realize, wait a minute. I know where I heard that. That was from my dad. And so those things just kind of become internalized, you know. I remember my son Jeremiah worked for me here in the office for a while, and I would tell him, you do it this way, not that way. You do it this way, not that way. And here's the reason why. And he'd go, oh, come on, you know, I'll do it this way. Take the shortcut. Well, now he works as a project manager. He's a analytical type guy, and he, and he says he hears me in his head all the time, do it this way, not that way, and he knows why now. So there's that old TV show, Fathers Know His Best, I guess, and that's what we need to learn about our Heavenly Father, too. We're talking with Adrian Gonzalez, uh, and uh, we're going to be going out to have a men's conference there. What, what's the date, date for the men's event, and where is it going to be? Yes, February the 25th out uh, here, uh, close to West Texas, St. Angelo, Texas, February mm -hmm. 25th at the Cathedral. And where and can they we'll be joined? Yeah. What, what, what website is it they can go to? I'll try to shorten it. It's WTXmen.com. WTXmen.com. Okay, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bear's Man Cave community in our three year school of manliness. Join at DeepAdventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at Deep Adventure. Dot com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to Notre Dame fcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul. Both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com, and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, we have Adrian Gonzalez with us today. He ha has an oil field, he has a, a ranch. Uh, so I guess you'd say he's kind of a man's man. Uh, but uh, if, you, if you see our YouTube video version of this show, <laughs> he looks more like a one of the early church fathers from Greece with his uh, ZZ Top beard, or maybe you call it, I think I call it the early church father, Duck Dynasty type beard going on there. Uh, 
But we want to, we want to invite you guys to uh, check out our website, deepadventure.com and Bear's School of Manliness. We have uh, we have something called the Man Cave where men can join up. We don't we don't use Facebook. We use our we have our own version at our website. But the men get together. We share. And we, we share what the sort of things that you would do on Facebook, only we don't use Facebook because we've been, you know, quarantined a little, little bit by them. But we have um, someone right, right now we're doing a fitness to witness challenge between just before Thanksgiving until the end of Lent. We uh, try to, you know, lose weight and get stronger so we have have the strength to and stamina to do the work that God has us. So we challenge each other that way. And then we also have a three-year curriculum in Bear School of Manliness where every month we, we go through uh, an area on our website, uh, video, written lessons, audio lessons. Uh, and this month it happens to be... Uh, it happens to be every man needs to have a creed, a code he can live by. And that's the th- theme for this month of developing that. So we invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com. We've got with us today Adrian Gonzalez. He's, uh, he is uh, involved in developing um, the, the San Angelo uh, men's event that I get to speak at. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Just, just a brief little promo, and then we'll go more into your, your story so people can know how to get, how to, how to get there, how to, how to participate. Yeah, so everybody that's listening, if you can fly down here to West Texas, I know there's an awesome event going also in Oklahoma, but we're having our own West Texas Catholic Men's Conference, and uh, we're going to have Brother Bear come over. We're so excited about that. Uh, we're looking forward to his uh, cigar night, for real. A lot of us are. Some guys are driving from San Antonio and all this stuff. It's a good drive. And so uh, come on down. The focus is Trumpin the Bishop. He's going to give a talk. Um, why don't we hunger for God? Why don't we hunger for the Eucharist? Why don't we men step it up? Why, why, are, why are we just seem like going through the motions? What's it going to take to step it up? Because as it stands, uh, looks like us men are not taking the lead uh, out here in West Texas anyways, because the women are having conferences and they're in the same city. And we're talking about three or 400 filling up the little conference room there that we got. I mean, the convention center, sorry. Uh, us men, we're, we're we're behind them. We literally started after them like years, like I don't know, half a dozen years. I would, I didn't even start this, but I kind of got put in it now. But anyways, uh, it's it's growing. Last time we had Father Larry Richards, which is awesome, and I think that kind of manly talk gets man's attention. And Father Larry is very down to earth, and uh, it was gritty is the name. Him. Gritty is the word. You know, I I, uh, yeah. I I got to speak at Father Larry Richards' church last winter in Erie, nice. Pennsylvania. They put me in a hotel on the lake, so the Nordic <laughs> Nordic winds were howling off the lake, and and they say, "Hey, we'll take you ice fishing when you're here." And I go, "You know what? Um, my goal." is to spend less than 90 seconds outside while I am there. And I I think I did less than 60 seconds. I would sprint from the hotel to the car, from the car to the mm-hmm. conference room. But mm-hmm. I'm really looking forward to going to, to coming. You know, the, the, my new book, which unfortunately isn't going to be out quite by the conference, oh. is called 12 Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? So what better place to go than San Angelo, Texas? Right. So, yeah, what, out here in West Texas. Yes, sir. What would you say is a couple of the things that cowboys, uh, cowboy virtue, or the the the, the way a cowboy lives? Uh, I would think uh, I don't know if I'm saying the right words, but it's more like uh, being a gentleman, the chivalry, mm. the strength, the grit, everything that speaks volumes of the old olden times, the medieval times of the chivalrous noble knights. Mm-hmm. It's in the cowboys. It's supposed to be in the code of ethics of a cowboy. Just uh, rough and tough um, and uh, actually very admirable you know most guys out here wear cowboy hats everywhere they go so you see with spurs uh, but yeah, the way they talk is yes sir no sir just uh, are they soldiers well it's just the way we are just polite uh, open the door for the ladies or anybody uh, before you putting others first in a way so those are the things that I think are admirable about a cowboy and uh, we need to have more men step it up to, to live that kind of code of ethics and morality in our days of respect. There's a fortitude there, too. You know, there's the, 
they get the job done come hell or high water type thing too. So on the ranch, you've seen that, but on, on the oil, in the oil fields, sometimes something happens and it's like, I'm sorry, you don't get to go home right now. There's work. We, we don't get to, we don't leave because we've checked out a clock. We, we leave because the job is done. Did you have, have you ever had things go awry like an oil, I think you mentioned an oil explosion or something like that? Where, I mean, oh, like, yeah. It's we all think. hands on deck, right? Yeah. Well, and a moment like that, it's a crisis. So we had, uh, we do it with heavy equipment. We're oil field services. We don't oil, uh, own really any oil wells, maybe one or two. I live among them. There's <laughs> literal around my house. But uh, the the worst moment that we experienced was a uh, oil field explosion when one of our bulldozers um, accidentally struck a line uh, or a major, I'm not going to say their name, but uh, once they hit, the gas started coming out and the it just engulfed in flames also when it got sucked into the engine and my mm. operator jumped out and it became chaos uh once the flames and the rain it was raining that morning it was cold it was horrible it's like a nightmare situation uh once there was chaos the the rig people that were on the next rig i know they call it a service rig oil field rig uh they got frantic with the massive flames and the smoke and they were some jumped in their truck and took off and ran over another one of their own guys. And some guys were trying to run back through the smoke to get propane tanks so they wouldn't blow up. And they got hurt again, too. It was just in an instant, it was chaos and it was disorder. And once we got word back at the office, it's just uh, unbelievable news, like a nightmare situation. Um, it just got worse after that with lawsuits and everybody. Uh, the, the hurt people that were severely burned for the rest of their lives. No, I'm sorry. Uh, luckily, luckily nobody got killed. Uh, our guys weren't really hurt or anything like that. But it's left a severe mark forever uh, in my in my mind as a one of the hats I wear as a safety guy out here, and I always bring that up that you always follow orders because what this guy did, he took it upon himself to do his own uh, deal outside the scope of work that he was told to do. He was not supposed to dig that day. He was supposed to just pull trucks through the muddy roads to get them to the rig sites. And uh, some guy in the rig said, can you do this because we're flooded? And that was not his job responsibility. So it, it bypassed all of us and it just ruined everything. Well, you know, it's like it's, it's, it almost sounds like that moment when Adam and Eve fell, when all of a sudden it was chaos, you know, and, and it left marks forever, you know, uh, and, and there's a there's a. A word we also use in Hawaii called kuleana. It's a very important word. And it has to do with responsibility. And what it means is, like, just in the simplest way, if I go down here and I eat at Cheeseburger in Paradise, have some breakfast, um, there, we have a server assigned to us, and there's a, someone who busses the table. But uh, if someone were to come over and say, and say, take the order for us instead of the waitress because they saw we were waiting too long or something, that would be taking that other server's kuleana there when you have responsibility it's like it's like a possession of yours not just responsibility it's like in the philosophy we call it talos it's your purpose in life and um when someone so so when you have a, a, a responsibility that you know is given to you by the lord um you steward that you you own that and they had stewardship of that garden they had kuleana of that garden and then the big and then and then when they when they when they were diverted from like you said stepped outside of their what they were supposed to do of their responsibility uh and try to do a job that wasn't theirs which was to know to know the to re eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil uh, a, a fire broke out and the, and the and the scars and the singes still remain and that's what's that's what's our role as men is like you're a safety your your kuleana is safety and so, and, and so you can take that into, your, into the world as, as a Catholic evangelist. You're saving people's lives. You're telling them this is the way. Do it this way, not that way. This is who, you, this is who your, your, your responsiveness is to, is to the Lord and to the, you know, the teachings of the church. So um, we, we, uh, we're already at a breaking. We already got to take another break. Uh, we're, this, we're talking with Adrian Gonzalez. He's a catechist, a father of eight children. Uh, the family business is the oil fields and ranching, and he's an RCIA teacher. He's a member of the Pastoral Council. So uh, we got a guy that wears a lot of hats. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wasnick Adventure.
This is Daniel the Boone Markham with another episode of Country Up Integrity. As a lad, I could not figure out why my friends could do serious wrong and never have their conscience bothered. Me, I did plenty wrong as a teenager, and yet my conscience hammered me to no end. Later understood it was partly due to my Catholic upbringing, which gave me a clear sense of right and wrong. The law did what the Apostle Paul said it was supposed to do. We read in the Amplified Bible, The law has become our tutor and our disciplinarian to guide us to Christ so that we may be justified, that is, declared free of the guilt of sin and its penalty and placed in right standing with God by faith. End of quote. After coming to the Lord, my conscience got a mite more powerful, would give me a serious butt kick until I went to the cross and got things right with the Lord and then go to any person I wronged to make it right again. Continually praying, reading, reading and preaching the Bible made the butt kickings more intense and frequent. Yet the release at the cross made it into something beautiful. Still have to go there during there every day. When I was an elected official, the temptation to compromise was unrelenting. Many politicians, even Christian ones, get tutored more by the world than the word to where lying muddy in the water and leaving out the truth is just a way of doing business. Had to get out of politics. It vexed my soul. The legendary cowboy comedian Will Rogers said, quote, If you ever injected truth into politics, you'd have no politics. End of quote. Got that right, Will. Well, this is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak Adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, you know, our, our TV show, Long Ride Home, is, uh, of course, appear, it appears on EWTN, and we're about to come out with uh, season four, which is 12 episodes that take place in Hawaii. It's really cool. But a lot of people don't have the chance to um, always watch it uh, when it's on it. UW10, you can buy our whole part of our series. They have some of our series up there at the catalog, or you can just go to Prime Video and you can power watch it there. Or you can go to deepadventure.com, become part of the man cave, and uh, we give you access to all of our, um, all of the TV shows. You can, you can, we give you secret access to the YouTube version of the show so you can have your friends over and have cigars and watch episodes of it, have your son watch it with you. All of our all of our video version of our radio shows are, are, are provided there too. There's, there's a whole catalog of them. And uh, and um, and you can also go to our YouTube channel, Bear Watson Deep Adventure, and subscribe there. So we'd love to have you become more part of our Ohana and participate with us. Today as our guest is Adrian Gonzalez. I was, I was talking to, um, is it Joe Perez? Who had, who, whose show you're at? Joseph Perez? Josh. Josh Perez. That's, I knew I was wrong. <laughs> yeah, Josh. I said, do you have anybody there that you think I, I should interview? That'd be a good. Yeah, Adrian Gonzalez. Interview Adrian Gonzalez. <laughs> but Adrian, tell us about, you know, uh, your your personal journey of faith uh, and, and, and where it's brought you to in terms of, in terms of ministry. Because one thing I like here is that 
we always say men have kind of, you know, been pushed aside when actually we've allowed that to happen. And I love the fact that you're on the pastoral council. I always tell men, get on the pastoral council. You're an IC, RCIA teacher and you're involved with the Curcio movement. But a lot of stuff happened before that. Tell us about your personal journey of faith. Well, how much time do we got? <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, I know. Yeah, if, if you go all the way to the okay, beginning. Okay, wait, wait, let me, let, me, let me say it this way. You asked a question. My mother used yeah. to say that Christianity is an elevator religion. You can tell people the gospel by the time you get on the elevator and the time you get off, right? Yeah. Or you, can read yeah. All, or you can read all the early church fathers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So somewhere in between that, like the elevator version versus all of the writings right. of the early church fathers. So since I only get one shot at being uh, possibly to have the attentiveness of this, this uh, whoever's watching this or hearing this, I, I'm i going to go ahead and take advantage and say, yeah, I'm cradle Catholic and, and all that, but everybody is, and then they drop out or they just continue. Um, the parents have a lot to do with it. I remember praying on our knees on the uh, rosaries before we had any type of success. My dad was eating out of landfills and going blind. They were starved to death in Juarez, New Mexico. And to, to where we are now with, you know, uh, about 50 to 60 employees. And we're, we're, doing, we're doing really good out here. But i, I got to go ahead and on my conversion stories, blame it all on the rosary. Um, we have uh, a lot of people that's that a, that's a manly ro- a, That's a manly rosary you just Yeah, did. so I, I just got the martyr's blood on it and, uh, mm. you know, Anyways, uh, I got to go ahead and uh, say that because my mom and dad were real. Even to the last days, my dad and his death, we were praying together. Even my non-Catholic sister that fell away, we were praying together. Uh, it's been, a, I think, it's the most instrumental part of my conversion story. Um, I wasn't a, a saint by no means. Uh, sad to say, going through high school and college, uh, I didn't know better. I don't think the kids nowadays know better. So I try to empathize with him when I'm dealing with him. But all I got to tell people is I'm reading the Book of Heaven, the suffering lady back in the 1900s, and it's really changing my life big time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and skip over to you know all the well, details because I've been through a lot of retreats. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Retreats don't, my parents took us to. Yeah. Don't, uh, don't, 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 don't skip too much. Uh, okay, uh, my parents, they would take us to retreats and they would involve us. And I remember even as a little kid in Colorado, because I was up there where I was born, I remember my mom would go to these prayer gatherings at a school. They let us, they let them use the school. And I, I was playing in the playground and I went to peek inside and open the door. And I was like, oh, you know, they're singing hallelujah and they're praising. And I was like, it just hit me like when I opened that door. And I never forget that moment. My grandma was there, but God rest her soul. And, uh, and it, it changed me, and uh, the rosary changed me. Um, I can't say I was converted right away. This is an ongoing process. I think conversion is an ongoing process until the day we die. And so uh, in, in college, I was still trying to do retreats on my own at Texas Tech University, and then I, I got a bus. Wait a minute, uh, wait a minute. You just blitzed by Texas Tech. <laughs> you guys stole our well, you, guys, you, you, you guys stole our coach. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I went to Baylor. You stole. You stole Joe Joe oh, McGuire. Stole our football coach. Uh, it's a big time thing out here. They're rebuilding. They're not. It's a nice stadium, and they're going to tear it down and make a bigger one right now or something. I don't know. I'm not a sports guy. I'm sorry. Okay, but, go on, uh, go on. But you went to Texas Tech. When I was, I remember I was at Tech and in I, Lubbock. I was, I was in Lubbock, and I was. I loved God in my own way still, and I wanted to have a retreat because I grew up in retreats, charismatic in a way, you know. Yeah, I, was, know, so I, I, I used to lead the charismatic music in Las, yeah. Cru, in Las Cruces, New Mexico. There's a charism in the charismatic movement that exorcists recognize that uh, demons don't like the charismatics, and that's why they've kind of been washed away, but they have a, this prayer where everybody gets together and they pray and things happen. The Holy Spirit comes, <laughs> and the church is like, ah, you guys, well, no, even the exorcists acknowledge this. Anyways, I'm not going to go to that uh, point, but I'm going to say that's how I was brought up. Mm-hmm. And that's why you see me, who I am. I was at the nursing home this weekend. I got charismatic all of a sudden because the Eucharist came in, and I had been coaching them in the pandemic. They have not had the Eucharist for two or three years. They're wow. locking us all out. It's a prison in there, and they're dying in there. 
And I was singing to them, see, Father can't come. He still doesn't want to, whatever, it's my reason. But when the Lord comes in the Eucharist, you guys are going to receive God. He's going to come in among you. And so when he came and I was singing to them, I felt the presence of God like David uh, was singing and yeah, dancing. Taking off shirt, dancing in front of the Lord. And I was doing that on my guitar. And I was saying, hey, if you want healing, he's right here. If you want to talk to me, he's right here. Amen. Anyways, that's kind of that's well, the kind of thing that we grew up in. But, you know, the the, the I, I, I was there involved in the charismatic renewal. That's what was my initial conversion was in 1973. And uh, but the bishop, but the church right away, uh, I think it was Cardinal Sunans. They did they 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 studied it and they came out with the how the church the parameters of where the, how that the charismatic uh, movement the benefits of it the 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 scriptural foundation for it and the and 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 the consistency with the Catholic faith. Some people kind of go to some extremes and that gives it a bad name. But I want to tell you something, Adrian. Yeah. One of my most beautiful experiences in Las Cruces was the Hispanic community there. Right, so I'm le- I'm leading worship, and uh, we had a in Las Cruces we had a group of maybe twenty thirty people grew to hundreds of people would show up the whole church would be yeah. packed, and uh, yeah. and we and I would lead the worship and the the Latinos there, uh, they would talk and pray in English because that's what we all knew, but when we'd have our small groups that have the music people over to my house for pot luck every Friday night because. Um, you know, you never knew what you're going to get there, man, because some of that stuff looked so innocent. It was so hot and spicy. <laughs> but what was beautiful is when the Latinos there would pray in English, which was their second language. It was beautiful. But when they would pr- pray in me- in Spanish, yeah. it just seems so much more heartfelt because it was more natural yeah. for them. And so yeah. when people That's ask right. me, why, why the gift of tongues? I say, right. you know what? It's so much more natural to pray in your in your native tongue. And if you're a yeah. Christian, your citizenship is in heaven. So, of course, God is going to give you a heavenly language. It's so much more natural. Uh, it's not crazy. It's not so. It's it's the it's it's only logical that you pray in the language of your of your citizenship, which yeah. is in heaven. So it's so the, the charismatic renewal is so beautiful. And I think so much of the new evangelization, new evangelization is like there's a river in in Colorado that goes underground. And I used to climb the Las Cruces, uh, I forget the name of the mountains there, Oregon Peaks. I used to hike up there because I was a surfer, and the only way, place I could find water was there was a spring up on top of those peaks that was from that mm. water source that flowed underground, just a little spring. Nice. And that's the charismatic yeah. renewal. I feel like the charismatic renewal kind of had this yeah. great explosion. And then it went underground, but all the yeah. desert started to bloom with all these beautiful yeah. gifts uh, being going <laughs> into like Curcio and other things. Yeah. The Lord had a right. plan. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So I'm going to uh, take the ball back here. Uh, well, I'm gonna, i got to interrupt I, you. Tell us about the what? men's conference, and then I'll come back, and then, you'll, then, you, just, then you have the ball back because we've got to okay. take a break. What, when is the event? Men's conference, February 25th, save the date. West Texas, WTXmen.com. Save the date. Bear will be there. Bishop will be there. I will be there if you. Are you going to be leading? Mu- are you going to be playing some music too? Uh, I there's going to be it's going to be an explosive event where it's short, 10 a.m. basically to 4 p.m. Mm. But there will be a point where I will be. I'm sorry, charismatic. Praise God. And cigars the night before. We'll be right back with more <laughs> of the Bear Wozniak adventure. We have Adrian Gonzalez as our guest. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. 
Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. still listening i thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station while well, you asked for it here is more of the bear wasnick adventure aloha uh, welcome back to the bear wasnick adventure we have adrian gonzalez as our guest we used to have a saying back in the the wild west days of the charismatic renewal mary had a little lamb and never became a sheep it became a charismatic and died of lack of sleep but I think that's true today, too. You know, Mary had a little lamb. It never became a sheep. It became involved in the new evangelization and died of lack of sleep. And I look at what all you do, uh, the Curcio Ministry, Prison Ministry, RCIA teacher, pastoral counsel, director of family. Fin uh, they say if you want to get something done, give it to a busy man. But you're, you're yeah, telling us yeah. about how uh, when you were young, your parents were involved in the charismatic renewal, and you went to retreats, and, and you were giving us – giving us because I think this journey is something um, – that will help some people find their path m more directly to the Lord. Tell us about that. Uh, so it changed my life to witness uh, families in action. Uh, people ask me, hey, what kind of retreat should I go to, Adrian? And I say, the next one they invite you to, because they're all different. The Holy Spirit will hit you in different ways. It is God calling you. It's not It's not set somebody, Joe Schmo off the street saying, hey, would you like to come? No, that's God saying, Come over here. I was just thinking about our conference, Bear, that, you know, doctors go for refresher courses. Uh, even techs go to get renewed. Uh, bankers have to get renewed. They have to learn new things. That's us as Christians. We have to go to these conferences. We have to go to these retreats. We have to sacrifice time. But you'll come out a better person for it, uh, whatever you want to be in, financially, uh, physically, spiritually, especially spiritually. Because our spirit animates the body. So uh, that's the attitude we need to have for all retreats, uh, no matter what they are, especially in the Catholic world. Uh, but, yeah, if that answers your question in any way, I don't know if I deviated. Okay, but. and so that began to – so then as you grew up, tell us about how that – how you transitioned to yeah. a – You went to Texas I, I became Tech. became a retreat – yeah, Texas Tech, I became a retreat master. I decided there's not that many retreats out here. There was a greater awakening and – Okay, but I was used to the charismatic other side where, where's the youth, where's the youth retreat? So you hardly heard of them. So I made one. I said, hey, there's a little lake out here. I'm going to rent that little center on the lake. I'm going to invite these people I heard about in Colorado. They got their own music and talks. I'm going to invite my teen friends from back home. I'm going to rent a bus. I'm going to, you know, it cost me like 500 bucks back in the day. And by golly, I filled it up, got over there. And we got to spend our time for God. I'm not saying there was life conversions, but I know it leaves an imprint in the head and that you want to live off of your imprints that you leave on your head. So as a retreat master, I'm still living it. Even today, I'm, a, I'm involved with this men's conference. I'm heavily involved in the Corsio movement, which is, by the way, what's actually making a lot of things happen in the church, but it's kind of quiet and humble. So if you've ever heard of that word, it just means course in Christianity. And so, uh, by all means, go to the next one if you get invited. My dad loved um, my dad loved the Christian movement. He was a deacon. He eventually became a Catholic yeah. deacon. But oh, I didn't know yeah. that. It doesn't Christian it's, movement have its have its history in Mexico? No, it's in Spain. Spain, uh, but, Mallorca, it is, but Spain. it's but it's 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 a, it's a Spanish background. In Spain. No, it's no? all Spain, and that's why you have Spanish words and Spanish mm. songs. De Colores. It's all De, De, De Colores. Colores. You still sing that song? Oh, of course, yeah, it's all so the cool. time. Yeah, it, it, I used to ask, sing it to this guy that was a Christista and Andrews until he died. He was he start crying. He had strokes. He couldn't talk, but he just started crying with that song. Mm, praise it God! Just, it, it, it brings a memory back. But I wanted to leave there before we go. I'm sure this can be our what, 
We got any more time? That last segment, you got I... you got six minutes. Okay, it's okay, all yours. So still heavily involved. All right, well, uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just spend some time on this because at one of these corsillos, I'm already devoted, trying to be devoted. I'm not perfect. I'm a fool. I fool. I fall for lies. Uh, I'm talking about sins and temptations. But I, I'm, I'm working to it because I'm learning in the book of heaven that, oh, my goodness, God is huge. And the closer I get, it's that mountain's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm, I'm more and more getting more afraid to sin. Anyways, at one of these um, corsillos, uh, talk about conversion. I, I'm the one supposed to be leading others. I'm, like when you're a teacher, you learn more, it seems like. And so uh, and you just got to get involved. It's a whole other world. I'm a director of family festivals, community festivals. I tell people, we can have more fun if you come help us than just go and have a burger and leave. Anyways, I was at this, uh, we're doing Divine Mercy to fill the time. It wasn't scheduled. It was just impromptu. Three o'clock prayer, Divine Mercy. Okay. A uh, few of us were singing. I was right next to the Blessed Sacrament. And I was singing with my eyes closed. And I was just, uh, I don't know, something happened. I, I, I can't say it's something I did. But I got lost. I I wasn't in this world anymore. I saw what I can only say is our Lord on the cross at his agonizing moments in darkness. And all I can relate to is a few things is that to see him, my being knew that this being on the cross was my father, our father. I can't even say my father, but... That was our true father offering himself on the cross. And it just, whoo, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing because what was on him was this coagulated blood. Like you couldn't see it in the dark, but you knew he was disfigured. This man was disfigured. And it, it was just hanging in there for love. And uh, I, I can't explain it in words. And then I look around. Because I knew I was supposed to be at the Corsillo, and I looked in total darkness, and I seen lights, some bigger than others. And I said, these are the souls or something out here, because I saw a close one to me was big, but some of them were not even existent, whatever that means. So the next guy uh, nudges me to wake up. I guess I was gone, and I opened my eyes. I didn't know I was crying. I was just drenched with tears, and I woke up. And since that moment, I've, that's my conversion, really. Yeah, everything's lead, leading up to this, I think. But for me as a man and taking my faith on my own, I, uh, you and my dad on his deathbed, I told him about this experience. And I said, you know, you're my dad, but I, that's our father. Mm -hmm. He's going to have to, you know, we're going to bear through this and whatever happens. And I just chased, chased me forever. Uh, so that, that's why I say, don't say no. Uh, when somebody asks you, a deacon passed away, is a fireball out here. That's the Lord asking. That when somebody asks you to go with it, that's the Lord. When somebody asks you to do something, that's the Lord. And so I become a yes man to God. Yes. Adrian, can you do this? Yes. Am I going to suffer back home? <laughs> Maybe because I got eight kids and a wife and a business and working. Uh, but you know what? I, I go to daily mass. I pray the rosary every day with my kids. I do the 3 p.m. prayer with my kids and my wife. We're all in this together. And basically, I tell people, you can't tell me anything because my wife is my gauge. You're not. You're, you can't be threatening me that I'm too involved. She will let me know when it's enough. And thanks be to God, I told her the same thing. Um, and she's growing uh, leaps and bounds. If the man would do his job, the woman can take it the next level, leaps and bounds, if we would only do our job and so that's my spill on the the retreats um i'm very devoted to it uh the youth coming we're building a big building i'm in charge of that committee too uh at our church it's gonna be a beautiful retreat center i call it a retreat center i don't call it activity hall because it's got showers we got audio visual room we've got it seats about a thousand i mean stands about a thousand uh um, people are already we're already Looking forward to next year to start packing it with retreats. So, so when people seals. say when people say the women have taken over the church, men are being yeah. mar marginalized, 
that's because we let that ha- we left a vacuum and someone yeah. had to do the job. But isn't yeah. it powerful when a man steps up and, yeah. and it doesn't take over, but just steps up and says, "Let me let me lay yeah. down my life. Let me let me serve." Right. Yeah, uh, I'm watching uh, videos lately. Jordan Peterson, I guess he's finally turned to Christ, and he's talking about. I don't think he's tra- he, he hasn't yet. He hasn't yet. No. Okay. Okay. Well, he should because. But he has a lot of great. God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he's talking about manliness and another video about manliness, and I see it as absolutely true that uh, we have this power that God gave us as a man that is needed, necessary in the world. And I told my French friendship group last night, and I said, "Look, us men, we're being like disarmed, disintegrated by an evil in the world, just making us less, less, and less, so we don't use our powers." And that's a power that God gave us as a man. Man, Woman has her own set of powers designed to be complementary. But if the man ain't doing his part, how's the woman going to do her part? Well, we're talking with Adrian Gonzalez, uh, a cowboy, oil man, West Texas. Uh, Tell us about the the men's conference that you're involved in leading. That's coming up in a couple. February 25th. Yes. February 25th. Website wtxman.com wtxman.com and I heard .com. and I heard you I heard we're gonna have a cigar night Friday night I'm gonna bring you my seven, seven virtue oh, cigars yes. I'll bring my <laughs> yeah, my seven virtue it. cigars will come and then we're gonna have a great event so um, Adrian we got to go so you probably heard of the oh. you probably heard of the Cristeros. Yes, I've heard of the Cristeros yeah, in Mexico. Yeah, the Cristeros. When I was at the Charismatic Center in Houston with Father Mark Goring, we were, we were filming our TV show, Long Ride Home. And I remember we did the same thing at the Charismatic Renew, Renew, Renewal where I led the worship in Las Cruces. At the end, we would yell out, Viva Cristo Rey. Do you know the rest of it? Yeah. About the Virgin of Guadalupe? Uh, the rest of the response? No. No, it's just I was well, Viva Cristo Rey. Well, okay, so here in our, yeah, that's what I mean. So our, our our show usually end with Aloha, but today let's end it with a Viva Cristo Rey, and you can say, you say it, you say it, but say it loud. All right, you count So down. the man out on the oil field can hear you. I want to hear it loud. <laughs> One, two, three. Viva Cristo Rey! Viva Cristo Rey! Long live Christ the King. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for Amen. a great hour. Uh, next week we will have we'll be uh, back. We'll have a another adventure on the Bear Wozniak adventure. Go to our website deepadventure.com. Find out more. Ahui ho and aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell. Thank you.